Hey guys, welcome to the Summit Heights Fellowship broadcast. My name is Edward Crouch and I'm the lead pastor here at Summit Heights. And before we get to our broadcast, I just wanted to say thank you for joining us. If you have a few minutes today, check out our website, summitheightsfellowship.com and you'll learn all about our church. We have a great student ministry, an incredible children's ministry, preschool ministry, and we do small groups all over our community from Mineola to Quitman to Winsboro, Hawkins, even in Big Sandy. We would love to have you check us out one Sunday. If there's anything we could ever do for you, please take a few minutes, go to our website, fill out that prayer card on our website, and we would love to pray for you, reach out to you, or minister to you in any way we can. Again, thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoy the broadcast. If there's any decisions or questions you have at the end of our broadcast, please reach out to us at our number on the screen or on our website. We would love to visit with you. Have a great day. Enjoy the broadcast. Morning. My name is Jake. I'm one of the pastors here. It's a privilege to be with you uh, this morning. Uh, Talking about Christmas, right? We're leading up to Christmas. Everybody excited for that? A few people. All right. So this always brings mixed emotions, right? The holiday season can, can bring out a wide range of emotions for a lot of people, depending on what's happened in life, depending on where you are in life, depending on what God's doing, depend, just depending on your perspective of things. And if you were here last week, Edward uh, sort of kicked us off with an intro talking about Mary and Joseph, all right? Mary and Joseph, who had their whole life planned out in front of them, had everything sort of figured out, and then something happened that sort of uh, derailed their plans, all right? Mary found out she was going to be pregnant with the Son of God. Now, how do you think that made her feel initially? I mean, you've got your whole life planned, the man that you're going to marry, all right, probably talking about, you know, what he's going to do for a living, how many children you're going to have, where you're going to live, uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You've got everything sort of planned out, and then all of a sudden an angel appears, and that's scary enough, right? You're sitting alone, minding your own business, and then bam, an angel appears. And Scripture said it startled her. It scared her, Right? The angel said, um, you have found favor with God. You're going to be pregnant from the Holy Spirit. Now, initially, Mary was a little startled by that. Now, she wasn't a little startled. She was startled by that. And then it says, and if you were here last week, this is a repeat, a little review. And then it says, Joseph, on hearing this, what did he do? He kind of, he got a little angry. I mean, you're supposed to be a virgin, and you're pregnant. And not only are you pregnant, you're giving me some line of bull that God got you pregnant. And so Joseph was going to what? Divorce her and leave. You know, I imagine many of us, maybe not just through the Christmas season, but just through life, have experienced anger, sadness, and fear. All the while, if we're Christ followers, if you're in here today and you call yourself a Christian, you're a Christ follower, Jesus came to bring joy and peace and hope. And so the question that we're asking over the next few weeks as we lead into Christmas is how in the heck do you find joy, peace, and hope living in the midst of anger, fear, and sadness. So today we're going to be talking about anger and sadness. And one of the cool things about us as human beings is we are built with emotions. We're emotional beings. And for those of us in the church, we do a really good job of expressing the emotions that we think people want to see. Like we can express the emotion of happiness. We have no problem doing that. We can express the emotion of excitement. When we get excited, I see Dak Prescott in the house over here. Big game today against Philadelphia. And if Dallas wins that game, there's going to be a lot of excitement. We have no problem expressing excitement. We have no problem expressing tenderness and compassion for the people that we love. But 
in the church, for some reason, we've been told that when it comes to anger, fear, and sadness, that those emotions are to be stuffed. Don't show those emotions. Don't let people know, all right? Boy, don't let me see you cry. How many of us men grew up hearing that? Don't be angry. Don't be fearful. How many times have we had people quote those scripture verses at us? Do not fear. And so we have a hard time expressing that, but the reality is, is that everybody gets angry. Jesus got angry. Jesus got angry and overturned tables. All right? Anger is an emotion that is part of us. Everybody experiences sadness. Everybody does. There's not a person in this room that at some point has not experienced anger and sadness. And so when we look at through this today, as we go through this uh, story, I want to camp out on anger and sadness. And the question is, how do you find joy in the midst of anger and sadness? I mean, I think we need to reframe the question, and I'm going to get to that in just a little bit. But let's talk about what makes us angry. What are the things that make you angry? I did a Facebook poll this weekend and got like 70-something comments. Little did you know if you commented on that that you were going to be used as a sermon illustration. But it, I was fascinated, and I'd already told myself a story of how this was going to go, and it played out exactly as I thought it would be. Because for most of us, what makes us angry are the little things in life. Somebody cuts us off at a stop sign. Somebody runs a red light, all right? Somebody looks at us wrong or takes the last donut or the last cup of coffee, right? That makes us angry. One of my friends uh, who's a big LSU football fan answered, LSU football makes me angry. Yeah. <laughs> Our sports teams will make us angry when they don't win. Our children or our spouses, when they don't listen, we get angry, right? There's all these little things. I was having trouble with the button on my shirt this morning, and I was trying to unlock the back gate back there. And if you tried to drive through the back gate, you couldn't because I couldn't get the lock open. It made me angry, right? But there were a few of you that answered with, I get angry when I see kids being bullied. Yeah. I get angry when I think of sex trafficking. I get angry when I think of, especially this time of year, families and children that'll go hungry, they'll go without clothes, they'll go without presents. That makes me angry. And see, for Mary and Joseph, their anger came out of well, this is not going my way. This is not how I had it planned. And I think for many of us, we do get angry at things like that. When life doesn't go our way, when somebody cuts us off, takes the last donut, etc., etc., etc. But what I want to talk about today is what do we do in a world where we see injustice and it makes us angry, and yet all the while we're told that there's this joy out there that we're supposed to have and that we're supposed to be feeling and that we're supposed to be expressing. And then, on top of that, if you really want to dive into what makes you angry and you really want to do some work and start to peel that anger onion, you're going to find that oftentimes it's not that you're really angry, it's that you're sad. Somebody hurt you. Somebody, a loved one may have passed away, and when you come across this season, I know for me, Christmas was real big in my family, going to my grandparents, and they're both deceased, and we don't do that anymore, and there's a part of me, as excited as I get about Christmas, there's this underlying little piece of sadness that exists, and when that sadness begins to overwhelm and begins to grow, it comes out as anger. I can only imagine Mary and Joseph, how Joseph must have felt when he got the news that his betrothed wife, who was a virgin, was now pregnant. And while his reaction may have come out as anger, 
just to know and to think about the sadness that must have come over him to know that this woman that he was pledged to be with, that he wasn't going to be with anymore. At least that was his initial response. And so what do we do with this sadness? What do we do with this anger? And how do we find joy in the midst of all of this? Well, first I want to contrast joy and happiness, okay? Because oftentimes we as Christians want to be happy. We just want to be happy, 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 right? Well, happiness is based off circumstances. So my friend, if LSU would have gone 12 and 0 this year, he would have been happy, right? But that's a circumstance. If there would have been one more donut a while ago when I stepped out a while ago, I would have been happy, right? It's based off a circumstance, okay? If my kids would listen to me 100% of the time, I would be happy, right? Well, it's based off a circumstance. And so I'm not talking about happiness today. I'm talking about joy because happiness is oftentimes based on circumstances, but joy... I want you to listen to this because it is the Christmas season. Joy is a gift from God. Joy is something that when God gives us that gift, we have it permanently. It's not something that we lose. It's not something that we misplace. It's actually a fruit of the Spirit. And while our emotions come from us, the fruits of the Spirit are gifts from God. They, ne- they don't necessarily belong to us. We, we don't own those. They were given to us by God. And when we are happy and when we're joyful and when we're peaceful, when we have self-control, those are all things that God is doing through us. And so when we talk about where do we find joy For most of us that are in this room, if we're Christians, we already have it. The better question that I would like to ask for us as Christians during this holiday season is, how do we express joy and how do we live out this joy all the while when we're dealing with anger and sadness? Well, Edward kind of gave me the answer last week when he said, well, true joy comes from knowing Jesus and knowing and believing what he's already done, okay? All right, so if it were that easy, then every one of us would be just as joyful, as joyful, as joyful can be. But it doesn't always work that way, does it? So what do we do? Well, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the Old Testament and to a book of Habakkuk, a minor prophet in the Old Testament This is, so like I know a lot of uh, Christians and a lot of us, and like when you get, uh, you have like your go-to scriptures, like maybe Philippians, book of John, uh, Ephesians, uh, you know, Matthew, somewhere in there. This is what I'm about to read to you is one of my go-to passages, and it's found in a minor prophet book in the Old Testament, and you're thinking, why in the world would one of your go-to passages be this? Well, I'm about to tell you, because I am a man who struggles with anger and sadness. I am a man who struggles. I let the littlest things get to me. I let the littlest things boil up in me. And if I'm not careful, if I don't acknowledge what's going on right off the bat, then I will let my anger come out sideways and it will hurt those that I love. And so I have to remind myself constantly of who I am, whose I am, and what's been given to me. And so I go to Habakkuk chapter 3, 17 and 18. I'll give you a little backstory about Habakkuk. Habakkuk was writing or prophesying in a time where there was a lot of pain and suffering. There was a lot of things that were not going right for God's people. And so Habakkuk is living in in the dead center of a group of people that were angry and were sad. And so Habakkuk has, has all of this going on, and yet he's hearing from God. He's God's voice to those people. And in chapter 3 and verse 17, this is what he pins down. He says, 
The fig trees might not bud. The vines might not produce any grapes. The olive crop might fail. The fields might not produce any food. There might not be any sheep in the pens. There might not be any cattle in the barns. Hold off. Don't show that next slide yet. This is a big deal. For you, this may not be a big deal. You may not grow grapes. You may not have a garden. You may not own any cattle. You may not own any sheep. In fact, if you were to wake up in the morning and there's no fig trees and there's no vines and there's no olive crop and there's no cattle and there's no sheep, you would wake up relieved that you didn't have to take care of all that junk. This is a big deal in Habakkuk's day. This is an agricultural society. No fig trees, no fig. Fig was a massive, massive deal in those days. They had to have it. No grapes, it's a big deal. No olive, huge deal. No food growing out of the ground, big deal. No sheep in the pens, massive. No cattle in the barns, huge. Be like you waking up one day and saying, although the jobs are none, although the paycheck is zero, although the people in my life continue to leave and let me down, although my loved one has passed on, although I feel alone, and betrayed, and although the things in my life continue to go wrong. Are you starting to draw a parallel of what's going on in Habakkuk's life? And maybe some of this is going on in your life. Well, verse 18, what is his response? But I will still be glad. Are you kidding me? Because of what the Lord has done. And then he says, my God, my Savior, fills me with joy. See, joy is not something that we find as Christians. Joy is something that God has already filled us with. It is a gift. And for many of us, myself included, while the donut is no more and the coffee is dried up and the car cut me off and the kids don't listen and I'm angry, angry, angry. Or it's a little bit more serious. Though my job is gone and my paycheck is gone and people have let me down and she has left and she has passed on and I feel all alone and things do not go my way. Yet, we can still be glad because God our Savior has filled us with joy. You know, the gift that just keeps on giving. Jesus, that ultimate gift that brought us salvation, also brings many gifts within that gift. And one of the gifts that he's given us as Christ followers is the gift of joy. We have joy as Christians we have been given this joy by God. It's a fruit of his Holy Spirit that the scriptures say that live within us. And so a better question for us as Christians today is not how do I find joy? A better question is how do I experience this joy that I already have? Knowing Jesus? Sure. Serving Jesus? Knowing what he's done for me, knowing that he loves me, all of these are great answers. But knowing Jesus got you the gift of joy. Just knowing him doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a person that expresses joy or that you're going to be a joyful person. I've known Jesus for 16 years, and for about 14 and a half of them, I was a jerk. 
Hello. <laughs> so how do we express this joy that's already been given to us? If you have your Bibles in John chapter 15, Jesus is talking to his disciples. And, and it's really interesting because th this is right about the time Jesus is given that last little bit of he knows he's about to leave. He knows he's about to go to the cross and he's given his disciples some instructions. Uh, he's just laying it all out. He's talking about the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's going to come and do this. And then he starts talking about, you know, I'm going to go build a mansion and, you know, I'm going to come back for you and just all this great stuff. And then tucked in the, the middle here, in John 15, Jesus starts talking about, you know, if you love me, uh, you'll, you'll abide in me. If you remain in me and I remain in you, you'll produce much fruit. And then he starts talking about this whole idea, if you keep my commands, and I will remain in you and you will remain in me. But listen to what he says, and I want to just kind of hone in on John 15, starting in verse 9. Listen to this. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I'm going to take a time out and I'm going to start real quick. I used to read this and I used to think, okay, so if you keep my commands, and then I would go back and I would think of like the Ten Commandments. And then I would think of like a Sermon on the Mount where Jesus kind of took the Ten Commandments and he upped them a little bit. You know, hey, don't murder, but hey, don't even hate somebody because if you do the same thing as murder. And then I, you know, then I would go back and I'd think about how Jesus would say, you know, don't do this and, you know, do this and all this stuff. And then the church, and then I took on these messages that the church would say, <clears throat> don't do this, don't do that, make sure you do this. And I would use that filter as I would read when Jesus was talking in this passage and he would say, if you keep my commands and remain in his love, then I would begin to tell myself, so I can't remain in his love unless I do all this other stuff. And then it dawned on me one day, that's not the commands that he's talking about. In verse 11, he says, I've told you all this so that my joy, whose joy? Yeah, he is. Remember, it's a gift. We own anger and sadness. God owns joy. He gave it to us when we received Christ as a gift. So through the power of his Holy Spirit, joy now lives in us and it can be expressed. He said, I've told you this so that my joy may be in you <laughs> and that your joy may be complete. I've read this passage 500 times in 16 years, and this never dawned on me. That's what I want in a world full of anger and sadness. What I really want for myself is I want my joy or his joy to be complete in me. How, how, how does that happen? Then he, then he goes back and he says, my command is this. All right, so let's stop and go back up. So if I keep your commands, I remain in you. If I keep your commands, I remain in your love. And by remaining in you and remaining in your love, your joy in me is complete. So what is it I have to keep? Oh, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friend. Wow. Wow. So for me to experience and express true joy, the question is not how do I find joy in a world full of anger and sadness. The question is, in a world full of anger and sadness, how do I express this joy and have this joyful life that's already in me? By loving other people the same way God has loved me. Isn't that crazy? How many times do we as Christians in our anger and in our sadness sit back and wait and want for someone to come and do something for us so that we're not angry and sad. 
How many times do we cry out in anger and sadness, God, will you just do something in me so that I won't be angry and I won't be sad? How many times do we sit back and we say, God, send somebody, and we confuse the, the joy with the happiness, so we'll say something like, send somebody to make me happy. Do something to make me happy. How many times do we sit back in our anger and sadness and we just, woe is me, victim is me, somebody's got to fix this. Christians, we're doing it wrong. We have joy. And when anger and sadness comes up, we don't sit back and wait for somebody to come fix us. We go out and we love people. We go out and we love people the way that we've been loved through Jesus Christ. And just me saying that out loud just now, my arms are tingling, my shoulders feel light, and I feel joyful. What Jesus is saying is, man, you have everything you need. Now listen, does that mean that that, 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 that it's not okay to be angry? Does that mean that we stuff anger and we stuff sadness? No, and I'm going to get to that in just a second because those emotions are real. They're a part of who we are. It's how God wired us. You know, Paul even said, in your anger, do not sin. It's real. It's real. But love is the answer. You know, I look back at Habakkuk, what it must have been like to serve the Lord and to serve God's people in the midst of all the pain and suffering that was going on. But I'm convinced because he was a servant and because he was faithful, he could say in sincerity, I will still be glad because of what the Lord has done. God, my Savior, fills me with joy. You know, when you look at Mary and Joseph, You've got to, you do have to ask the question, how did they do it? I mean, how in the world did they do it? Pregnant out of wedlock in those days, how in the world did they do it? How did they come to grips with the fact that this is how it's going to be? How did they go nine months and not grumble the whole time. I mean, some of us accept our fate, but we grumble about it the entire time. How did Mary and how did Joseph walk this journey with joy? How did they do it? I think Mary gives us the answer, or Luke gives us the answer in Luke 138. Mary, I think, is finally coming to grips with what's about to happen. This won't be on your screen. I just want you to listen. This is a revisit from last week. But there's a key word here that I think is huge. In Luke 138, when the light bulb finally goes off after Mary's expressed her anger, she says this in verse 38, I serve the Lord. It's that word, serve. And you go back to what Jesus said. You want to feel the joy that you already have? You want to express that joy that you already have? Go love people. Serve. Mary said, I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. And then in Luke 1, 46 through 47, Mary sings a song that says, My soul gives glory to the Lord because my spirit delights in God my Savior. See, here's the key. This is what I have learned. This is many testimony time for me. This is what I have learned in my experience with anger, sadness, as it relates to joy. I have people in my life that are very close to me that have told me on more than one occasion when I get anger and sad, they just kind of grab me and they say, you have a good life, enjoy it. You don't have to be so angry all the time, relax. It's gonna be okay. Here's what I've found. If I will acknowledge that I'm sad and angry, not, not live in it, because I've, I've, I've done that. I've, I've been that Christian that's lived in sad and angry. 
And you just kind of, you've seen them. You've probably seen me. They mope around. They look down at the ground. They don't really connect. They don't communicate. Um, they snap. Okay, I've, I've been that guy. So I'm not talking about staying. I'm not talking about wallowing. I'm not talking about playing the victim. But if I can acknowledge that I'm angry, and if I can acknowledge that I'm sad, and let's be honest, there's plenty of things for us to be sad and angry about, especially this time of year. All those gifts under the tree are because there's families all over our community. They don't eat. A lot of them don't have sh- kids, don't have shoes. I mean, there's plenty to be sad and angry about. So if I can acknowledge that I'm sad and angry, you know, Mary, it said right off the bat, I don't like this. Joseph, I don't like this. What's going on here? So if I can acknowledge that, and I can put that in front of me, and I can put that sadness in front of me, and then I can remember who I am and whose I am, and that I have been given a gift. Actually, I've been given many gifts, but today we're just focusing on one, and that's joy. And if I can remember that I have been given a gift, and that God has given me that gift, that even in the midst of anger and sadness, that I can serve and I can love others the way that I have been loved. And oftentimes what I'll do is I'll tell myself, hey, I don't want that person to feel the way I feel. I am sad, but I don't want that person to feel sad. So I will give a gift of joy to that person. If I can remember that, then I find myself joyful in the midst of a world full of anger and sadness. So Christian, my challenge to you this season, during this season, is to remember that joy is not something that you find. Christian, joy is not something that you go out and seek. Joy is something that God's already given you. It's a gift, and he's already given it to you. And so the challenge is, how are you going to express this joy in a world full of anger and sadness? Serve. Love. Embrace. One of the most powerful things that you can do as a Christian is to walk up to somebody else and give them a hug, a handshake, a smile. You will be amazed Not only the gift that you're giving that person, but how you begin to feel inside as well. Christian, you have the power to be joyful because God's given it to you. Amen? I want to pray for us. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Because for the most part today... I've been talking to Christians. And for many of us as Christians, a light bulb may have gone off in you. But I I would be naive to believe that everybody that is sitting in this room is a Christ follower. And so just with every head bowed and every eye closed, I, I would ask you the same question that was asked of me roughly 16, 17 years ago, do you know Jesus? Because the reality is, is that to receive the gift of joy, you have to know Jesus. And even bigger than that, I mean, forget about joy for a second, just to receive the gift of eternal life with God, you have to know Jesus. Jesus. As we celebrate this season, we're going to talk about anger. We're going to talk about sadness. We're going to talk about fear. We're going to talk about joy. We're going to talk about peace. We're going to talk about hope. But none of that would even matter outside of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And so with every head bowed and every eye closed, I ask you, do you know Jesus? And if you would say, honestly, I Either no, I don't know Jesus, or I don't know if I know Jesus. I want to pray for you. So if that's you, nobody's looking around, I would ask that you would just slip your hand up 
and give me an opportunity to pray for you this morning. All right, so Christians, my prayer for you this morning is that you would go be Jesus and live out the joy that you've been given. Let's pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for your gifts, your mercy, and your grace. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that we would be people of love. I do. God, I pray for that one that's struggling this morning. God, I pray they would feel your comfort. I pray, God, that they would know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have destined them for a life of joy. And God, when, not if, but when anger and sadness and all the things that cause that come up, that we would be grounded in the truth of who you are in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. So, Father, I pray a blessing over your people. And I just pray, God, that you would do great and mighty things. God, I love you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Summit, before I dismiss you, I just want to bless you. Thank you for being here. I want to remind you of a couple of things um, that weren't mentioned during the announcements just because of all the, the time constraints. Kid Venture Kids, you've got a rocking Christmas party coming up this Wednesday in Generation. So parents of Kid Venture Kids, make sure you get your kids here for that this Wednesday night. The elders are going to be back there loving on kids, judging some kind of contest, whatever. It's going to be a great time. And then students, you got a Christmas party party of the week following that. See you guys next week. We're going to continue this series. Uh, so I hope to see you back the next few weeks as we move into our next emotion. All right. Love you guys. See you next Sunday. Hey guys, welcome back. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast today. And if there's any decision you felt like God is leading you to make today, we would encourage you to uh, make that decision and to go online. There's a prayer tab on our website that you can go to. We'd love to pray for you. We would also love for you, if you accepted Christ today, to send us a text. We have a number at the bottom of the screen that you can text us the word accept if you accepted Christ. Or if you would like to know more about baptism, just shoot us a text with the word baptize to that number on the screen and we'll get to you, I promise you. Hey, have a great day and listen, if you're looking for a great church and you don't have a church home, come visit us one Sunday. We have two services, one nine, one at 11. We'd love to see you. Have a great week.